Um, and we've got a couple of Ducatis on there, uh, Keith. And it's a, a big couple of uh, races for actually some of the Ducati drivers, uh, riders, I should say. Sorry, people have me having a go at me for that. Sorry, riders. Um, who will get the seat alongside Francesco Bagnai? That is the big question. Ducati have uh, stated in the last couple of days that they have confirmed their deadline for uh, a 2023 factory seat decision. It is very much between Jorge Martin, Enea Bastianini, Jack Miller, all battling it out for that second ride. So these next couple of races, including Le Mans, are going to be uh, big deals for these guys. Yeah, why would why would you be in a hurry to to make that decision? You shouldn't be. I mean, they're all contracted Ducati men anyway at this moment in time. With the the Mir and Rin situation coming into play now, that's definitely made it a lot easier for Ducati to just hold off on a decision at the moment. Let's see how the boys go. Let's see see who's doing the business when it gets to. You know, there's only 45 points between I think it is Marquez uh, Marquez in ninth place in this championship and and Quattararo who leads the championship. 45 points. You know, it's, it's a very low scoring season so far, really. So there's a lot still to shake out over the, what, 19 rounds that we've got in total. So I wouldn't be making any decision. And certainly not now the Suzuki thing is out there. I mean, I think I'd sit back a little bit and say, OK, boys, you you race amongst yourselves. Let's see how you, you manage it. Jack Miller, if he can get a result this weekend, puts himself back at the head of the pile. Let's wait and see. Miller's had a little bit of a lull, but perhaps in Ducati's eyes. So... Yeah, this weekend might be the weekend he turns it around. I think that's exactly right, Keith. I mean, I think this Ducati statement or, or, or announcement, if you like, came out before the Suzuki sort of news broke. So this might have just made them press pause a little bit on this because, as Keith says, you've got two more riders now, two top riders who, who are looking for rides. Um, Paco Sanchez, Mir's manager, insisted that nothing was agreed with anyone else yet. You know, he's going to start talks with... I think almost every team is what he told me. So, you know, he will be, that means he will be speaking with Ducati, whether, as we say, they've, they've already got enough options. Thank you. But I don't think, you know, if you've got a rider of Mir's caliber and, and Rins, who knows, you're not going to just dismiss, dismiss that. I'm sure there'll be meetings with every manufacturer that's left to see, could we do something here? And, and it's just going to complicate Ducati's already complicated decision. Well, certainly a, a big few weeks ahead for uh, MotoGP up and down the field. Now, uh, how can we watch the Northwest 200? Um, Northwest will be going out. That's a very good question, actually. I feel like I always do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't brief you on that one on beforehand. <laughs> um, watch for your um, television listings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it will be out there. <laughs> Check the old TV guide. Uh, and, uh, I'm sat alongside some old reprobate called Steve Parrish. Parrish and I are uh, joining forces for this one. So uh, uh, he and I are being brought back together to uh, commentate on the Northwest over the weekend. So I'm really looking forward to it, actually. It's a great event. And the weather here in the UK is really good this coming week. And blimey, do the Northern Irish people deserve it for their main classic race of the year? Because they have had terrible times over the last few years. Um, so really and truly, this one is going to be an absolute, and there's some big names that are, are riding there as well. So it's going to be a great event. And oh, you've I got a MotoGP, a... which we'll all be I watching. Know. People are going to have a lot to watch this weekend. Unfortunately, Keith's voice is going to be all over at least half of them. So uh, you're going to have to prepare yourself for that, ladies and gents. Um, let's move on then from the uh, huge Suzuki news, of course, but it will continue to cloud, I think, the, the week building up to Le Mans. Um, but before Le Mans, we had some Jerez testing Pete um, and uh, Quartararo trying some new things, not able to work directly on, on the M1's top speed because, of course, the uh, the engine freeze rules in MotoGP. Bagnaia getting some new stuff to play with those. Uh, Bastini I should say, getting some new stuff to play with uh, because of his, uh, his good start to the season. So uh, what, what have we learned from uh, their bit of in-season testing? So this Suzuki news really exploded just at the end of the test. So that kind of took, obviously, all the attention away from what had been going on on track. But um, but it, as you say, they were perhaps not, not quite the level of new parts that we might have expected from some of the teams. But they did have some new things, as you say. Basically, there was nobody that came out of this saying they'd made a massive breakthrough, which I guess is not really a surprise. But we saw um, Quattro, as you say, he needs top speed. The only really the only thing they can do is this fairing update. And that sounds like it'll come at Mugello. Basically, it'll be a smaller fairing is, is what we're expecting. Less less downforce, less drag, a bit more top speed. And then they'll be they'll have two fairings then. They don't have to get rid of the old one. So, so if you like the one they're using now, which has more downforce, 
they'll be able to sort of switch between them. And so if they think they really need the speed and they're not going to lose so much on the acceleration, you know, it'll be a, a choice they have to make. So expect that at Mugello, but there's still obviously this weekend at Le Mans, they'll still be using the current fairing. He tried a swing arm. He tried a new front fender to keep the engine a bit cooler. Again, might help a bit with, with the engine performance, but uh, nothing special was, was his words. New clutch settings for practice starts, which basically told him that what he's got now is better. So again, nothing there. New brakes. The, the MotoGP's got bigger brakes this year for, for the circuits like Austria, Burrum, Mategi. Um, and he just wanted to try them to make sure he wouldn't have any surprises. I mean, rider feel, and, and I'm sure Keith can explain this, but quite often it's not just the performance of the brakes, it's the feel of them. Uh, and I think they wanted to just make sure that when they put these bigger brakes on, as they will have to do, because we saw Binales had these issues in, the, in Austria previously that he's not going to have, have any nasty surprises. So that was basically his day. He, he was relatively happy, but again, nothing special. Honda uh, aerodynamics seemed to be the main thing for, for Marc Marquez, various aerodynamic parts, including last year's um, wings. I think they're trying to find this feeling for the smaller tracks that they've lost with the front of the bike. But um, again, he, he said, our weak point is still there. So nothing, nothing massive there. Bastianini, as you say, got the 22 fairing. So that obviously still fits on the 21 bike. And um, he said, liked it at Jerez, but have to see at Le Mans what it goes like. But he said, you know, if he had to do the race at, in Spain now, he'd put the new fairing. So uh, KTM's a new exhaust, uh, things like that. But yeah, maybe not, nothing radical. And as always, as we're saying, with a post-race test, the grip levels are different. The temperatures are different. It was windy as well. So um, yeah, it's uh, n no, no massive breakthrough. But as I say, to be honest, the end of the test was really sort of overshadowed by this news from Suzuki. And then we go to Le Mans, the worst track on the, the whole calendar. <laughs> oh, dear me. Do you really think it's the worst track? I do. I think that it's a crash fest every single year. We have more crashes at Le Mans and through a 